I was really moved by the Holy Spirit. I mean, really strongly to go to Ruth. And I want to go there because I want you to learn some things along with me through the life of Ruth that are very prevalent to you and your life. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody there? Ruth 1-1. One, one. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and in, in verse 1 and verse 2, it really teaches you that uh, about a, a foundation. And basically, what it tells you is that there was a famine. Look, at, this is, this one verse right here is crucial. There was a desperate need in the land during that time. Amen. Okay, I want you to focus on desperate need. Desperate need. Desperate need. People were starving. Desperate need. And so, because there was a desperate need, Naomi's husband, Amimelech, decides to take his family to the country of Moab. Now, you have to understand that Moab is the land of the Moabites. And the Moabites are enemies of the Israelites. They were not their friends. They were their enemy. So that's the first thing I want you to get is that he went to the enemy to get his blessing. Amen. Amen. In a time of desperation. How many of us in a time of when we feel like we're in a desperate situation? Okay? Living in poverty, having lived in poverty, being in consistently stressful, desperate situations will cause you to build up a habit without you knowing it in your life of living the same way even though you're not there anymore. Okay. And when you're in desperate, stressful, uh, uh, hard places in the world, you make a choice. We always go to anybody. We'll go to our enemy to get what we desperately need. Amen. Amen. We'll go to people that we know are totally on our side. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. Yeah. Amen. So anybody that's not a born-again believer, and I'm going to say something that may be hard for some of you to swallow, but it's yeah. biblical. Yeah. Every believer or anyone who claims to be, because even the Muslims now, the black Muslims came to be believers. <laughs> so anybody who's a believer you have to clarify who they believe in. Amen. Amen. And those who believe in Jesus Christ should be following the word of God. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. Right. One of the tests of a true believer, who is your pastor? Right. Because people will say to me, I'll say, are you a Christian? They'll say, yeah. And I say, okay, what church do you belong to? And they might even be able to tell me the name of a church. They cannot tell me the name of the pastor. Amen. Amen. That tells me you're not a consistent person in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you are a true believer, then a true believer follows all of the Bible. Amen. And anyone that does not have a long-term pastor... Okay, it's in rebellion. Amen. And rebellion is witchcraft. Amen. 
Okay? So, they become your enemy. Just because someone says they're a Christian or they're saved or they are a believer does not make it so. Amen. Amen. If they are a Christian or a believer or saved, then they must have a lifestyle that lines up with that word. Amen. Or they have become backslidden if they were ever really saved. But either way, backslidden or, and you can be an unbeliever for a lot. You can be a believer, unbeliever. You can be a believer to a certain point and then you become an unbeliever. And the reason is whatever, because of this, that, or the other. Amen? Amen. That is your enemy. Now, that's, that's, that's harsh because we live in a time now, it used to be a time where the family believed and the family went to church, but the family structure is totally being annihilated now Amen. in these last moments of time. Mm -hmm. So when I say that's your enemy, that could be your mama. Amen. Amen. Now people are like, that's my mama. But if your mother is not living according to this mm -hmm. word of God, then she is your enemy. Amen. Your father, your uncle, your sister, your brother. You're either with him or you're against him. But you cannot be both. It's like being half pregnant. You understand? Everybody understand? So you have to first ask yourself, who is my, who is my family? Who is a real part of the body of Christ? Because the Bible tells us in the last days there will be wolves in sheep clothing, false teachers. There's a lot of falseism going on right now yeah. in yeah. the earth. Through television, computers, commercials, a lot of stuff that looks real is not real. Amen. And a lot of Christians are not real. Because Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things, Amen. the things that I tell you to do. Amen. So that's how you can tell who your foe or your enemy is. Who is living the word of God and who is not. Now we don't go around just hating on people because they're not living. They will suffer. They will walk the earth and suffer. And they will die and suffer out of disobedience. Yes. Obedience to the word is mandatory with God. Amen. He doesn't give us a gray area, uh, something that can bond us out of not obeying the word. Amen. You either obey the word or you don't. Amen. It's just that simple to God. Take tonight. Tonight's Bible study night. There is nothing that God's going to accept for a reason not to be in Bible study if you are a member of this ministry. Amen. Amen. Now what people don't understand is now you have sinned. Amen. So now that you have sinned, are you going to repent? Probably not. Because you don't see not obeying what your bishop and pastor has said as sin. Amen. So now the devil has tricked you because now you have unrepented sin on your life. Amen. And you will not get into heaven with unrepented sin on you. You will not. Amen. So imagine all just here, but in any ministry where people have joined and they don't go to church. Amen. For whatever reason. And yet Muslims, Harry Krishnas, all types of cults, they wouldn't dare miss going to temple or whatever they call it, whole Jehovah Witnesses, they have a name for their place, uh, wherever. They would not miss it. 
But the Christian, what I find is, even, let's say in a school, I get excuses. And then when I say, but Jesus said he took all excuses to Calvary, people get angry. They get aggravated. Uh -huh. With that word. Amalek went to his enemy's camp to receive a blessing, and he got it. Thank you, he got the blessing. Look, he got the blessing. Go to, he went and journeyed in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And his two sons had two wives. So they, here's another teaching. Look at me. They followed their, he, the sons followed their father. Yeah. Dad said, let's go to Moab, our enemy's country that hates Jehovah our God, has killed people in the past, but let's go there. Sometimes I find Christians will go there. They will deal with people that they know, they know the lifestyle is a detrimental lifestyle, yeah. but they will deal with them out of desperation. Amen. Because there is a lack of love for God, which will cause a trust in God that you would wait on God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of times because we are in sin in some shape or form, and we know it, we will go around people who we are comfortable with. Uh -huh. If you're still drinking liquor, let's say, you're more comfortable around people drinking liquor than you are here at the church. Amen. So you might be a person who want to be in a hurry to get out from church because you want to go get a shot of booze uh -huh. with your friends. See, once, people, once you begin to grow in the Lord, you find you're not content being around the enemy's camp. Amen. But it's only if you grow. Amen. If you, and that's left up to you, you know. I told you, Bishop Jake said people would come to him once I did say, I'm leaving the church, I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. The growing is not on the pastor Amen. or the preacher, the growing is on you. Amen. I don't care if I got up here and just said Jesus wept and sat down. You can mature from that scripture. Amen. If you go do 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show Amen. yourself approved. Amen. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Most people do not go home and read the Bible. Amen. Most people don't go home and pray. I'm too tired. I'm too busy. Amen. So the enemy brought famine in the land, and they went to the enemy's camp. And look at verse 3. There's always a price for going for what your needs are to the enemy's camp. Amen. He dies. And her two sons get killed. In the enemy's camp. A lot of times, <clears throat> I know I have one family in the church and for a long time I've been saying, don't allow your children to go to that house. Don't allow them. And they couldn't see nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But the house was not flowing in the spirit. Yeah. Since then we've seen several things come up. And I know because that spirit wasn't in their home, it came from where they were going. Mm -hmm. And something's going to die in your spiritual life and then in your physical life when you keep going to people who are the enemy yes. of your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. What are the things that happens to people a lot? is that they become stunted in their minds. Mm 
This is as far as I'm going to go. This is mm -hmm. as far as I'm going to grow. This is it. And so when they're pulled to grow further or go further in God, they rebel. Because they are still not walking in the love of God. Because see, when you love someone, even us women or us men, or you men, Amen. you love somebody who wasn't no good for you. Amen. Yeah. But you went out of your way oh, yeah. to do for them and to sacrifice them because you was in love. Amen. Well, that kind of love ought to be for God. Amen. Amen. So that when God is trying to stretch you, you'll go with it because he's trying to grow you past. But a lot of people, a lot of in this church, in the whole body of Christ, are still looking in the rearview mirror. Yes. So they will tell herself, I can't do that. And I already gave you all the example of me with pushing the 50 pounds and the instructor saying, you can push 100, and me saying, no, I can't, no, I can't. But then I said, okay, I'll try. Amen. Most people never say, I, I, I'll try. It all starts here. Amen. I can't. I can't. Yes. I can't. I can't. Because I couldn't, therefore I can. Which tells me they do not understand that that person is dead, according to Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Amen. So they stay stunted and they never go any further and they never become what God wanted them really to be. Because they keep, they keep stunting their self in their mind. Amen. Start backsliding into their old self. Yes. They become, now you've mixed oil and water. So you've got your old self and your new self trying to be in the same container. Like I told y'all before, I have this concoction that I use on my back and on my whole body in the summer, really. Because I like it, it gives me a nice tan, but it also protects my skin. It keeps my back from itching. And that is, I have a spray bottle with oil and water in it. And in the morning, I have to shake it up. And I might get two or three spurts out of it, and then it stops. And the reason is, the water's no longer mixed with the oil. And so I have to shake it again. People who I see in this church, everywhere in the body, who have gone but so far and just become stunted in their minds, and their mind is affecting their spirit, because as a person thinks, so are they, uh, will come in, and Jesus talked about them as a seed, and they come in and they do great for a while. And then they, they stop doing this, or they stop doing that, or they're slow to do this, or they're slow to do that, and you're, Hmm, what's going on? But Jesus gave an example of them. He said the seed that fell on stony ground, it came up quick, and it was joyful, and it was excited and exuberant. Mm -hmm. But when the desperate times come, depressed times come, yes. it fades away. This was an Israelite who faded. He faded. God is looking for people who are committed to death. Amen. Amen. And who will go the extra. Amen. They will constantly stretch themselves for the Lord. That kind of person will be continually finding themselves receiving blessings. Because what you give is measured, according to Luke 6.38. The measurement is not only in your commitment, but God's ability to use you beyond what you know you're capable of doing. Amen. If you don't allow God to do that, you will go to your enemy's camp. You have to be someone that if God says do this, that, or the other, you may not know how to do it. You won't know how to do it. Yes. 
Amen. Because what he wants is a dependence on him. Yes. God, I don't know what in the heck I'm doing, but where you lead me, I'll follow. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't never done this before, Pastor, and I don't think I know how to do it. God doesn't want you to know how. Amen. He wants you to be dependent, not independent. Amen. Uh, chapter of St. John 5 tells us the independent branch is good for nothing Amen. but to be thrown into the fire. Yes. But a lot of times in this ministry in the body of Christ, I see people who will serve God where it's comfortable. Amen. It's uncomfortable to do something you've never done. Amen. It is very uncomfortable to do something that in your past you failed at. But what God will see is if you really love him, yes. even if I screw this up, I'm going to do it. Amen. And I guarantee you, when you're like that, you will not screw up. He won't let you. Amen. The scripture said that God will not allow us to be ashamed or confounded, confused. Amen. And because you take that step of faith, like Peter when he stepped out the boat, God rewards you. Amen. Now you're doing something you've never done. You're learning, but you're also realizing this is God. Because there's no way I could have done it. So God gets the glory Amen. for me. Amen. And you don't take it for yourself. Amen. 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 What mo most believers do is in desperation. They go to the enemy. They don't go to God. Amen. Amen. They believe that God has either failed them or God's not going to do it in a timely fashion. And because we don't want to suffer, we don't want to go through anything, and we don't want to look bad, so we'll go to the enemy first. Amen. Which is saying in the face of God, God, you will not supply all my needs. The price Amalek and his two sons paid, they died. <coughs> Because they chose to go to the enemy rather than go to Jehovah God. <clears throat> Jehovah Jireh is our supplier. Amen. Now, he says that kind of flat. I will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Yes. If you are not a giver, then Jehovah Jireh's philosophies are not going to work for you. Amen. Luke 6.38 cannot be in play for you. Malachi 3 will not be in play for you. You are someone who does not love God. Amen. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I tell you to do. You are dependent on you as the giver. You're looking at your bills, you're looking at your money, and you're saying, I can't afford to give. You are somebody who's been totally tricked by the devil, and you will never profit. Never. Lord. Now, people don't like that word, but that's the Bible. Amen. You will not prosper. You will continue to be on a treadmill financially until you're willing to give it away. There are people in the body that God will speak to them through the Holy Spirit and say, give your paycheck. Yes. Because God is trying to do something, break down something, convert that money into the blessing they really need. Because, see, you will never have enough money for the desperate need. Amen. You will never. I don't care where you work. I don't care how much money, you know, people run out a better job and a better money. And I just look at them, if God's called you to do something, let's say here or at some other ministry, if it's someone else, and, and you're saying, I, but I need to go find another job because I need more money. They will find, or if you're here, you will find, you still won't have enough money. That's right. Amen. 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 You have broken the cardinal rule of obedience. It's yes. better than sacrifice. God will not allow you to prosper outside of his will and his word. Amen. He won't. 
God wants you to become obedient and trust him. Amen. Amen. Love, you know he's right in there. Love is trust. You, when you love somebody, you trust them. You cannot love someone and not trust them. It will not work. Amen. You can make yourself believe it if you want. But trust does not work without love. Amen. If there is not complete trust, there is no love in the relationship. I don't care how you try to fix it up. Amen. Love demands trust. When Bishop, I know whatever we are, and he'll do this every once in a while. We get home because he knows when I go home, I'm tired. I'm going to been on the move all day long. Yes. All day long, working my mind, working my body. Yeah. When I get in the car, if I don't have to drive like I do tonight, but if I don't have to drive, I'm going to go to sleep almost immediately. And he wants me, he said, I'm just glad you rested. When I get home, I'm going to take my shower, do whatever. I'm going to bed. Bishop's up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. That's his lifestyle, his clock. Okay, my clock is, I'm going to bed. I've had it. Because I've used up everything I can use up during the day. Yes. Okay. Bishop's just gearing up at midnight. <laughs> and that's fine. Because when you love someone, you allow them to be who God created them. Amen. Amen. Now between the military, the streets, jail, whatever. He, he's a late nick. He's a night crawler. And so I have my TV and I turn it off. He has his TV and he has headphones. That that wireless to the TV. So he can listen to the game. He loves sports. This was either watching sports or an old western movie. Or, or war or action. It's a typical male. Yes. So he'll say, I'm home. He's, he'll tell, tell me about, and I usually wake up close to when we're passing Walmart. He said, I need some apples. And I, I'm like, mm hmm he said, well, you don't want to go. I said, not really. I want to go lay down. I need to lay down. And he'll say, okay, I'm going to take you home. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to go back to Walmart. And, of course, I said, well, I feel bad. Said, don't feel bad. You're tired. I'll go back to Walmart. Uh -huh. Well, then he's pitling around the house, pitling around the house. So it may be 45 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour later, he'll say, I'm leaving for Walmart now. If I didn't trust my husband, there would be a real, I'm using that for an example, uh -huh. there would be a real concern there, and I wouldn't get any sleep. Uh -huh. Usually, I don't even know when he come back in the house, because I'm gone. And that's okay, because I, I fully trust my husband. You cannot be in love with God and not fully. Yes. Fully Amen. trust him. Amen. If you fully trust him, why are you hemming, hesitating, not fulfilling, going to the enemy's camp? Uh -huh. Why? Because something's going to die. Amen. Where if you had waited on God, God who cannot lie would supply. Amen. And I know that's a tight word, but Amalek and his two sons are a perfect example of going to the enemy. Yes. Uh -huh. And then what happens is you now have to go back to God. So, we, and here's the other point. Because Naomi's husband is dead. Her two sons are dead. Back in that time, a widow is considered trash. Nothing, no good. Good for nothing. Senior citizens were considered just in the way people. Something like most Americans treat them. And so what would happen is, if you did not have a man 
a husband or your son, somebody that was male to take you in and support you, then they would put you in the street. And the widows would then go over by the dung piles, and that was where they dumped doo-doo at and trash, and just sit out there till they die. That was the future now for Naomi, because her husband went to the enemy's camp. For some of us, our children, our grandchildren, Amen. things will die in their life. Yes. Because we would not trust God. Mm -hmm. Yes. We went to the enemy's camp. <clears throat> the enemy's camp could be, I can't do it. The enemy's camp could be, I don't want to do it. Uh -huh. So tonight, it's raining. Now, the last time I looked, none of us melt for the rain. Amen. Amen. Last time I looked. Amen. So what reasoning do we give God? And they're going to go to sleep tonight. And not even take a second thought to the fact that I have committed sin. Mm -hmm. I have gone to the enemy's camp. People that put their name on the roll here and did not even have enough of God in them to come to Bishop and Pastor and say, I want to leave. Uh -huh. For whatever reason. Mm -hmm. They are out of the will of God. Yes. But they will obtain mercy, I believe, for honoring the leadership. Amen. They're still sinning. Things are still going to die in their life. Amen. And it could come up in latter years in their health uh -huh. because it's disobedience. Amen. When God puts you somewhere, not when you, well, that's grandma's church, somewhere, but when God puts you somewhere, you are obligated to stay where God puts you. Amen. Amen. And to get rooted mm -hmm. and grounded, the Bible says. Yes. But because we play into the enemy, mm -hmm. and because a lot of times the word or things that go on are really God trying to begin to pick out the splinters mm -hmm. in your heart? Uh -huh. A lot of times people are inconsistent and uncommitted, don't love God or anybody else. Because when you love God, you trust Him and you're committed. Amen. That's it. When you love Him. Amen. Because they have not dealt with themselves. It's almost like when a man is married and commit adultery, many, 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 many times I've heard men say to other, to their wives in counseling, it didn't have anything to do with you. And it really didn't. <coughs> the problem was them. It wasn't the wife. Uh -huh. Now, they have a whole lot of excuses, but the reality is there was something in the man that wasn't right. 